This exercise is to demonstrate how to do a single variable linear regression. So make sure that you have the data analysis tool pack installed into your Excel. To make sure that is the case, click File, Options. Under Options, click Add-ins. Under Add-in, Scroll all the way down, manage Excel add-in, click go. Make sure that the analysis tool pack have a check mark and also the server, uh, software check uh, add-in have a check mark as well, because later on we are going to use software. So analysis tool pack, software add-in, click OK. So once you click OK, then under the data, on the right-hand side, you should have data analysis. So let me explain what this exercise is about. So let's say there is around 35 students and I, um, and I record the GMAT score and also their MBA average. The GMAT score is recorded in column A <clears throat> While well, their MBA program GPA average is recorded in column B. So we have 35 student data. And the questions that we are asking is that if someone has a GMAT score of 650, what would be the expected GPA during the MBA time? So that is the questions that we are asking. So to do it, we need to use a tool called linear regression. You click on data analysis. You click on regression and then click OK. So basically the first one is the input Y range. The Y range demonstrate the dependent variable, the one that you like to predict. So in this case, that will be column B. So you click on the little square here, highlight B1, control shift down, and then click enter. Input X range, that denotes the independent variable, the one that you have the data. So you click on here, and then you select A1, control shift down, and then click enter. So the first row is a label. Make sure that you click on label because the first row is a label. And then let's say we like to output the range. So click the output range, click here. And then let's say the output range would be in F1. So you click on F1 and then you click OK and OK. So this is the linear regression output. So the first number that you need to pay attention is the p-value. So what is the p-value? So that means that what is the probability that it occurred by randomness? the probability that it occurred by randomness. So there are two different values. So the one that we like to focus on is the one with GMAT, which is J18. So how to interpret the J18? So the number that we have is 0.28%. So let's say 0.3%. So that means the probability that it is random, it's only 0.3%. And then our benchmark is usually a 95% confidence interval. So what does it actually mean? So the x-axis is the GMAT score and the y-axis is the average. So that means that the probability that the slope equals to zero is 
the probability of slope equals to zero is 0.3 percent. Probability slope. So why, where did I get the number probability slope equals to zero? Well, the probability of the slope. Well, this is the slope, okay? So on row 18 is the slope because that is describing the GMAT score. And then the slope equals to zero. What does it mean by slope equals to zero? That means that the X axis and Y axis have no relationship. So knowing the value of the GMAT score doesn't help to predict the GPA. So at that point, so that means there's no relationship. So the key point that you need to remember is that slope equals to zero implies no relationship. So slope So this is the key point that you need to remember. So right now, the probability that slope equal to zero is only 0.3%, okay? So the number here. So that is roughly 0.3%. So that means it's almost zero. So that means there's a high probability. We are more than 95% confident, more than 95% confident that there is a relationship between the x-axis, which is the GMAT score, and also the y-axis, which is the MBA average. So the other number that you may be interested in is the R square, which is given in cell G5. So the R square is a number between zero to one. So when R square is very, very small, that means there is a lot of other information that is <clears throat> that is not captured. On the other hand, if R square is very close to one, that means pretty much all the information is captured. So then right now in a social science context, usually a 25 to 30 percent is pretty good. However, if that is under an engineering context or under science, under physics, chemistry context, then there's not so much behavioral impact. So therefore we would expect the R square to be closer to 80% or 90%. So anyway, so what we need to know is that the R square equals to 23 or 24%. That means the prediction, we capture a lot of important information to predict about the MBA class average. So then the last point is the regression formula. So in order to read the regression formula, you understand G17 and G18. So the regression line, it looks like that. So the MBA, MBA, GPA, uh, GPA equals to the intercept, which is 0 0.948 plus the slope. multiplied by the GMAT score. So if you want to predict someone with a GMAT score equals to 650, you'd like to know what would be the person's MBA GPA. So then what you do is that equals to 0 0.948 plus 0 0.003 multiplied by, now the GMAT score is 650, which equals to 2.898. So that means, let's say right now, someone coming in with a GMAT score of 650, then based on the past data, I would predict that this person would have a GPA of 2.89. So the important point that I'd like to conclude one more time is that this class is about single variable linear regression. 
single variable because we only have one independent variable, which is column A. Linear regression because this regression line is in a linear format. Linear format, that means when you show this linear line, so there's no square, there's no square root, there's no other format, there's only a linear format. So that means GMAT. So then the first step, which is after running linear regression, then you look at the P value. That will be the first one that you look at. And then specifically, you only concerned about the P value of the slope, not the intercept. Okay, you do not care about the value J17, which is the p-value of the intercept. You do not care. What you care is G18, uh, J18, J18, which is the p-value of the slope, and the slope is the GMAT score. Okay, so that means what is the probability that the GMAT score can predict the average? by randomness. So probability that the slope equals to zero is 0.3%. So that means by randomness, then that will be 0.3%. So no relationship. So right now with a small number, that is good. Okay, we want the number to be less than 5%. When that is less than 5%, that implied statistically significant relationship statistically significant relationship and then if that is statistically significant then the next thing <clears throat> you like to check is the r square so right now the r square is between zero to one with a number around 24 percent that is pretty good under the context of social science or maybe business or maybe marketing survey well, the next step, you like to look at the regression line formula. Then you look at this two cell, and then you can write it in this equation format. So then the left-hand side is the dependent variable, the one that you like to predict. The right-hand side is the information that you have. So right now, so the equation is the GPA average equals to 0.948 which is the intercept plus 0 0.003, which is the slope multiplied by the GMAT score. So if someone having a GMAT score of 650, plug it into this formula, then that is the MBA GPA average that you expect. That concludes today's exercise.